about once a generation, you come across some sort of media that is so prescient that everybody in the generation identifies with it. It could be TV, it could be music. In this case, we're going to talk about Avatar The Last Airbender. This show came out in 2005, well after the heyday of Saturday morning cartoons and those early Cartoon Network show. Appearing on Nickelodeon, this cartoon had something for everyone. It was a new style of animation where it combined a lot of manga-esque tropes while still keeping traditional American style of animation in mind. You had kung fu action, the magical ability to quote-unquote bend the elements to your will. There were even several love stories involved, all the while keeping it age-appropriate for kids. So when Netflix announced that they were going to remake this beloved animation in live action, well, a lot of us were quite skeptical, myself included. We remembered a lot of Netflix's horrible, horrible remakes in the recent years, and I'm looking at you, Cowboy Bebop. For whatever reason, they decided to update these shows for modern audiences and change it. These changes weren't minor changes to make it more understandable or make it look better in live action. These were fundamental changes to characters and storylines that were beloved by millions. This recent year, we have seen several shows that came out pretty well. For example, the Yu Yu Hakusho remake was a fantastic live action version of a classic Japanese cartoon. Same thing with One Piece. And somewhere along the line, they must have got the message because Avatar was not too bad. It's not the perfect show, but it's a pretty good and fairly faithful retelling of the original story. Most of the changes that were made were for the good. There's a little bit of reordering on what parts of the story we learn information about certain characters, and that's just to make it a little more clear from the beginning. For example, in the show, we don't really see Azula until later in season two, but she appears almost right away in season one. And in order to make her character and the character of Ozai work, we need a little backstory. That being said, the actors they got were for the most part, good. The kid who plays Aang is a little questionable, but miles ahead of the horrible M. Night Shyamalan movie from several years ago. They seem like they try to keep what the traditions of the cartoon were in terms of how different bending works. We get to see a little bit about air bending. We get to see beginning stages of people learning to water bend. They kept Katara still not knowing very much at water bending, and she's got to improve along with Aang. And they keep a lot of the side characters as well. We meet Suki, and of course Sokka has a love interest with her. We meet Bumi, Aang's old friend from when he was a kid. And even the visuals are overall good. A lot of the backgrounds look absolutely fantastic. Even though they clearly are CGI, they really give you a scope and feel of what they were portraying in the cartoon. This is very difficult to do in real life, as clearly they're not going to have a budget to build all these giant sets. So they were able to use newer technology like they use in The Mandalorian that they could project these 3D images behind the actors as they're acting to make it really look pretty seamless. One of the big fears about the changes they were making was a change to Sokka's personality. In the original show, he was fairly chauvinistic. He always thought that women were weaker and women couldn't do what men could. And part of his character arc was getting his butt handed to him by women all over the place to the point where he has to rethink the way that he had been brought up and his own belief system and use that in order to work with all these women for the sake of Team Avatar. They said they were taking that away for this show and they did. And it's mostly okay. Sokka's acknowledged as having worked very hard and suffering for his people because it was his job. His mother died and his father left him at a very young age. He became the quote-unquote man of the village. He became in charge of making sure everyone was safe, making sure everyone had food. And this really put a lot of weight on his shoulders. And I think they even do a better job in the live action than in the cartoon of acknowledging just how much he did for other people. While the show overall was good, there were some parts that weren't as great. 
Some of it really couldn't be helped. One of those is that the original show was about 22 episodes long, 22 half an hour episodes long, meaning you were looking at about 11 hours of content. Whereas in the live action version, it's only eight one hour episodes. The problem is they had to cut it down. And so some things seem a little forced. Sokka fall in love with Suki. And then a few hours later, we see him falling in love with Princess Yue in the Northern Water Tribe. It seems a little fast, like maybe he's a bit of a player. Whereas in the cartoon show, you don't really get the same impression. Another minor issue was the way that they use martial arts in bending. One of the cool things about the original cartoon was each element had its own style to manipulate that element. So the air benders were based on a style of Kung Fu called Bagua. The water benders were using Tai Chi. This was a fabulous addition where most of the time it would just be stick your hand out and some light ray comes out of it and that's how magic works. In this world, it seems like there's a guiding principle behind it. It seems like there are things that you must master in order to use these techniques efficiently. And it was great. One of the problems with the live action is most of the time the Kung Fu looks like weak tea. Clearly, these kids weren't given much, if any, Kung Fu training beforehand, and they were just left to sort of figure it out. And we can even say the same thing for adults. The character of Ozai just didn't look that great. The actor who played Iroh eh, looked a little silly as well. Another issue is some of the special effects. While overall they were pretty good, especially when using their bending and for backgrounds, there was one major exception to this, and that's in the characters of Momo and Appa. Momo is a flying lemur, and Appa is a six-legged, shaggy, they call him a bison, but he kind of looks like a yak who flies through the air. The problem with these characters is they look like Sonic the Hedgehog. You guys remember the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, right? Well, do you remember what the original design for Sonic was? The one that was so bad... Sony Pictures had to give a mea culpa and redo all the animation because people were so horrified by how he looked. Well, they must have used that same original animation crew because they are just frightening. They're not the cute, cuddly creatures that we saw in the show, and you definitely would not want to buy your kids plushies of these things. One of the other issues is just how faithful it does remain to the show. Now, this might sound a little strange, but... A lot of the dialogue directly comes from the show or is clearly inspired by it. And the one issue with that is that some of these kids look much older than the characters they're supposed to be playing. Traditionally in Hollywood, people in their 20s playing teens. So what looks like late teens or maybe playing early teens. The issue with this is the first season of the cartoon of Avatar The Last Airbender, there's a lot of very silly billy kind of humor, which is perfectly reasonable when it's aimed at 10-year-olds. The problem with this is because they have actors who look slightly older than what they should, it almost seems a little juvenile or infantile. But overall, things were really on point. So overall, what's my opinion of Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender Season 1? Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty faithful retelling. It's absolutely safe. There's no naughtiness or questionable behavior or subject matter in this. It's something where if you grew up watching Avatar and you want to watch something with your kids, this is a perfectly fine show to do it with. Although it's not perfect, it was a very good effort, and I'm looking forward to season two. But there's no beating that original Avatar The Last Emperor cartoon. If you could, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. We'll have more movie reviews coming soon.